You're not in Professor Ryan's flitlet course? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not in any courses at the ed school. Uh, it was good to meet you. It's great to see you. Bye. He's lying. I find that very attractive. Whit Stillman has not made a movie in since, I believe, 1998. Did it just come to your, through normal channels, through an agent? Or did you guys hear that he was, like, casting and, you know, want it, were interested? Like, how did it all happen? One day, somebody called me and, and was like, do you want a million dollars? I was like, yeah, well, you have to do a Whit Stillman movie. I was like, okay, great. And I'm just kidding, because it's, <laughs> it was a very low budget. So, <laughs> uh, no. You can work just, on a movie that cost a million dollars, is yeah, what they exactly, said. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's what I meant, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, no, yeah, through through agents, like very very classic. Uh, very, yeah, I don't know about yeah, you though. Yeah, no, no, no. Typical, typical channels. And I, I was uh, nice embarrassingly up. under informed going into it. I, I actually, uh, I'd seen Last Days of Disco when I was eighteen. Uh, yeah. Liked it, but over my head, you know, didn't appreciate it like I do now. And um, <clears throat> and I finished the script literally, I think, in the car on the way there. And but I, I mean, loved it. And and you know, from page one, I would have loved to do it. I mean, it's obviously uh, very funny, very intelligent. And uh, and it was there, and it was a meeting that turned into a reading that turned into him giving me the part in, uh, in the room. And it was that's the first time that's happened. And uh, uh, yeah, it was rare. And then he did the deal with my agent on the uh, uh, himself. So he's very hands on. Uh, and, and this, and even to start it's discussing money with me in the room, he said, we can't, we don't have any money. I mean, we can't pay you. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> so this isn't just indie. This is old school, like yeah. early nineties yeah. indie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, let's do the deal right here. Yeah. Like, just I do was it. like, I don't. Yeah. It's fine. Very scale. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so did he ever explain to you guys like why he'd taken so long to like make another movie or was this something that he'd been gestating he, for a while? He's not that forthcoming with, uh, he asks you, what's great is he's very engaging and, and he asks you a lot of questions, but, um, he, it's hard to kind of pry his history out of him, but um, I learned more from this recent New York Times interview that's kind of great. But I think what happened essentially was he moved to Europe and he wrote a lot of scripts, but he had uh, a little uh, more difficulty than expected getting them made from uh, across the yeah, pond. And, and maybe also he was, I, I think he knew that people would expect him uh, to do something really interesting and he didn't want to just do another movie. I think he's very specific about what he's doing, right? Yeah, I mean, he definitely so. takes a long, he labors over his scripts. I know this script took a long time, and um, I know he's got some more in his trunk. And I think the other ones he tried to get made in the interim were, uh, um, that were at least uh, his, right, uh, um, completely his. I think he worked on some adaptations and stuff, but I think were a little more expensive, and so they were also difficult to get made that way. But he was also, from from what I was reading in the notes, uh, very uh, willing to make changes and just do things at the last minute, you know, um, with one of the actresses, you know, the whole idea of having her speak in um, a British yeah, accent yeah, was like sort of a long. last minute thing, and so he wasn't precious about it. Would no, he, and, and he was not yeah, written I, French. I, exactly, I was not, I mean, the character was meant to be American, and uh, and here I am, so. So how did he meet you? Did he meet you overseas in I, France, or did he? Well, you... that's, that's I actually put myself on tape for this project and um, for different characters, and then they asked me to put myself on tape again, so I did it again. And um, and one day they called me. They they wanted me to meet uh, one of his uh, uh, screenwriters, uh, uh, so a guy he worked with, uh, I think, on Metropolitan. Mm. Uh, so I met him in Paris, and um, then. I went to Spain for something, then I put myself on tape again. But I think in the middle of that, he, he already knew. I mean, from what he, he said to my agent, he really wanted uh, me to do this part. So that I was really happy. It was it was great. Then I came to the U.S., first time in the U.S. And, uh, yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and actually... What's really funny is that I didn't have uh, my visa yet. I mean, it was funny uh, now, not back <laughs> not in so the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was it was actually it was actually a problem. So they started shooting the movie, and I, I wasn't cleared yet. Um, so, and and he didn't recast when he could have. So that was really nice, right? Thank you, Whit. So how old school an indie movie was this? Like, did you guys shoot this in like two weeks, or was this like a? I think we shot it in a month. Okay, uh, but um, oh, in a year. I mean, <coughs> wasn't it? Well, my well, part my part was done in a month. You might have been yeah, hanging around. Yeah, I was. I, I, I had a bigger. I don't know what you for you. I think I had a bigger part months. that needed more. You know, more work. That's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just mowing the lawn for another eleven months. There is a wonderful dance number at the end of the film. How much rehearsals do you actually do for that? Not sort of last that time? much. I mean, we did it sort of in between other scenes, set, you know, setups. I mean, there wasn't. Um, I don't think there was ever a day we had off where we had a rehearsal. But, but did you? What did you rehearse? We, we had a lot of rehearsals. 
but too, con- like the the one step, the the one step. Yeah. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you step. didn't come to this. That's right. <laughs> you didn't come to this, Adam. I see. Well, okay. I think it shows Busted. in the film, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> you know, Wit definitely has his own style, and and it sort of comes across very much in 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 the feature itself. Was it what you thought when you were shooting it? Was it, you know, were you satisfied with how it all came together? I, I've seen it three times and I liked it. I've liked it uh, more every time, as I, as was the case with all his other movies to me. It, um, I, I pick up things that I didn't pick up the first time and it took me about that long, at least after, at least one showing, to adjust to, it's, it's, it's very reminiscent of his other movies, but it's a style sort of all its own, and it is different, and it took me a minute to, I'm, I was so familiar by that point with his other ones that it was, it jarred me for a second, and then now I'm, um, I'm, I'm well versed in it, and I love it. I, I haven't seen it yet, so I can tell you. <laughs> no, I it's a true story. It's a true story. Guys, thank you so much. Congratulations thank on the you. film, and I hope you actually do get to see it at some point down I will, the road. I will tomorrow. Keep it. Keep it Save it for your deathbed. <laughs> <laughs>